Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Welcome again to Growing in Grace. I'm Mike with Joel, growingingrace.org. You'll find our past programs all archived on there. Our focus here is the good news of the grace of God found only in Jesus Christ, not in our works or effort, but only in his finished work and and the blood that he spilled and the law that he fulfilled on our behalf. That's our focus here. We try to wash out as much of the traditional religious stuff that has kept people in bondage and focus on the gospel, which simply means good news. How are you, Joel? I'm doing good, and I thought you were going to say the gospel found only on this podcast. (laughs) It's the only place you're going to find it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I, I'm glad that's not the case. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I, I, there is a lot of, well, not maybe not a lot, but you, you kind of catch a little bit in people, teacher worship, so to speak. There are some big name grace teachers out there, and they really have a great and wonderful message that they share, the gospel message. And some people, you kind of sense that they are, like when Paul said, you know, some people are saying, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos. Well, it just seems like some people are saying, I am of this teacher, or I am of that teacher. And we don't want any of that here, of course, uh, because we are fallible, of course. There are things over the last 10 years that we've said that we might not agree with anymore, or that we would say differently. Uh, The point being, is that we worship God, we worship Jesus Christ, and he is the way, the truth, and the life, and we're simply talking about him. Uh, That's what we're here to do. Like you said, kind of sort through that religious junk, that legalistic stuff that has caught people up in bondage, and to try to help people through the scriptures to be free from all of that. Well, you may be listening uh, to our podcast at any particular time of the year if you're going back through our archives, but uh, we're recording this during uh, the week of Christmas, that we celebrate and the birth of Christ, of course. And and we thought we'd spend a little time just maybe looking at some things that you don't often hear when it comes to to the birth of Christ. I mean, you've probably heard us say uh, many times over the years that Jesus was obviously born of a woman. Paul brought this out in the book of Galatians, that he was born of a woman and born under the law. And why were these two things important? Well, because back in the garden, God gave man dominion on planet Earth. When man fell, it was going to have to be a man that would get that dominion and that restoration back. That redemption would have to come through a man. And of course, that man or that Savior would be Jesus Christ. But it was important that he be born of a woman. And the fact is that most people don't realize he was born under the law, the Mosaic law that God had given to Israel. Uh, This was very important uh, because in in Jesus, in in his ministry on the earth, he was an an old covenant prophet and teacher who was functioning under that covenant, not the new covenant. The new covenant wouldn't start until after his death. We're not going to spend time on that during this podcast. We're focusing on the birth. The point is he was born under the law and he had to be born of a woman. So he, he was even though we, we call him the God-man, he, he, it's important to realize he, he was 100% man. He was a human being. Otherwise, what he accomplished would not be a, a legitimate thing. So I'm just kind of glancing here, Joel, in, in Luke chapter 2. There's so much to, to siphon from, from some of this, but some things I, I thought that would be, be nice to, uh, to bring out in Luke chapter 2. We find, first of all, after, after Jesus was born, there, there was eight days that, that occurred under the law where there was, there's like a waiting period. Jesus had not even been named yet. The baby would not be named until that eighth day where a, a ceremony would take place and circumcision would take place. And, and the parents of Jesus, Mary and Joseph, made sure that all of these rules under the law, all of these rituals and, and these ceremonial things were going to be followed according to that law. Uh, otherwise, again, if these things w- were not addressed and adhered to, then Jesus would not have had a legitimate ministry as the Savior. Yeah, they had to keep all these things. You know, Jesus himself, even later on, when he had, after he had started his ministry, he said, I did not come to abolish the law, 
but to fulfill the law. So Jesus did have a law ministry. That's part of what he had to do as a man, going back with everything that you were saying there. It had to be a man, and and this law thing had to be fulfilled. That word fulfill, to complete, to accomplish, to furnish, uh, to execute. Anyway, we, we don't need to necessarily get into the definition of that, but Jesus came to fulfill the law, and so everything that he went through from his birth onward, it all had to be done in accordance with the law. Otherwise, Jesus wouldn't be able to fulfill the law, and he wouldn't be able to do all these things that he had come to do. Uh, like you said, it was very important that he be born as a human being. You know, Matthew 2 talks about him being named Emmanuel, God with us, and that's important to know, but it's also so very important for us to understand that he was one of us. He was a man, and uh, because of that, he was able to fulfill everything that needed to be fulfilled on man's behalf, on our behalf. If it wasn't for that, uh, none of that could have been true, and so uh, none of that would have happened. And so as you uh, look in Luke 2, so many things that went on. After Jesus was born, you know, you had the shepherds coming to visit him after they had heard the angels saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. The shepherds came on down and they saw the baby Jesus and the shepherds told them many things that they had heard about this child and all the people marveled at that stuff. Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And then it says here in Luke 2, 21, and when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, <laughs> then he was given his name. His name was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. So they had already known that he was going to be named Jesus, but he wasn't actually given that name until the eight days were completed and he was circumcised. Uh, and that was important, again, because all of this had to be done according to the law. Yeah, I mean, it even goes on to say that every firstborn male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. Uh, and so there was a sacrifice that occurred, and a pair of turtle doves, two young pigeons, a partridge in a pear tree might have been thrown in there. I don't know. It doesn't say that. <laughs> Maybe um, a fig tree or something. Who knows? A <laughs> fig tree. <laughs> in, and there was a man in, in Jerusalem. Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And uh, this man was, was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel, the, the redemption of Israel, uh, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in, and he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to carry out the custom of the law, and some of this stuff is so easy to brush over, right? <laughs> they were carrying out the custom of the law, and Simeon took him into his arms and blessed God and said, Now, Lord, you are releasing your servant to depart in peace according to your word. For my, I got, now get this, for my eyes have seen your salvation. He was looking at salvation. Jesus Christ became salvation to us, right? And, and he goes on to say, which you have, you, I've seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Well, I don't know how many people overheard him talking when he said that, but this was extraordinary because, of course, the covenant had been with Israel until this time, but he was referring back to prophecies, many of which can be found in the book of Isaiah, where Jesus Christ would become our salvation, he would become our covenant, and he would become a savior and a revelation to the Gentiles as well. Yeah, isn't that awesome? I mean, so many uh, times I think all of this is missed. We know nowadays, of course, that Jesus came for all people. But at that time, you know, it, the scriptures had said all of these things about the, about the Gentiles, but yet I think many people in Israel still didn't quite get it. And even I think when Simeon said that, I think a lot of people still didn't get it. But it was God's salvation that he was seeing, and that is what is so awesome. And all these things, again, had to be done according to the law to fulfill everything that needed to be done. And there's something else that's interesting about the... Uh, Christmas story about the birth of Jesus. Uh, in Matthew 2, we see another uh, another description of what happened around that time. And not really to get into this, uh, well, it is important, I think, for one reason, and, and I'll, uh, I'll share as we uh, talk about this. This beginning of Matthew 2 says, now after 
Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the days of Herod, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. So they came to worship him. Now it says, after Jesus was born. Now you see all these Christmas plays, you see Christmas cards, you see artists' uh, depictions of Jesus lying there in the manger, and you got the shepherds there, of course. In Luke 2, it talks about the shepherds having come to visit. But you also have these wise men there from the east. Well, the Christmas cards and the Christmas plays have that wrong, <laughs> because this is this all happened after Jesus was born that the wise men from the east came uh, to visit. It could have possibly been a few days after Jesus was born. It could have been a few weeks. It could have been a few months or even years after Jesus was born, they came to Jerusalem, not to Bethlehem. (laughs) So it took some time to get from Jerusalem to Bethlehem. Herod sent them to try to find out where Jesus was born, because they didn't even know exactly where Jesus was born. They were just following this star that they had seen. They had to travel to Bethlehem. They had to find where he was. So eventually, they came upon uh, Jesus Christ, the child, And in verse 11 of chapter 2, it says, And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary and his mother. So they weren't even in the stable. They weren't, you know, in the manger anymore. They were in a house. So anyway, all that to say that sometimes we have these preconceived ideas in our mind of how things are. But when we look at the actual scriptures, we find that the story actually goes a different way. And that's the case, I think, with a lot of what we share here on Growing in Grace. We pick verses out here and there, or we have preconceived ideas of what uh, of the way the gospel is supposed to be, and then we look in the scriptures and we find out that it's that's not really how it how it is. Yeah, I mean, some good points brought out there, Joel. That they pr- probably traveled quite a distance to get to Herod. The chances are, it was probably quite a few months by the time they had reached the baby Jesus, and and Herod even wondered. He pulled him aside secretly and wanted to find out when did this star appear. So Herod ascertained that Jesus had been born within easily within the last two years because he went and, and had uh, all those children within two years uh, killed. Uh, so we, we know that. But, but the point is that those manger scenes and stuff that tradition has taught us with showing the magi or the wise men there at the, the stable or the manger where Jesus was born is inaccurate. And so, you know, we talk a lot about things here regarding the new covenant and the gospel, and some people think we're just way off the wall, breaking all kinds of traditional teaching that they've had in their church. Well, how many have thought that the the wise men were, were at the birth of Jesus in the manger? You know, tradition sometimes just gets it wrong, and that's why we need to focus on the truth of the scripture and what it really says. Well, hey, this is the last podcast of the year of 2015. We're going to be taking a little break next week, but we will be back in the new year with more chat about God's amazing grace. So we hope you have a very Merry Christmas and, of course, a wonderful new year as well. See you next year. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various Internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.